Hello, Nick Elsner here on special assignment for Devil's Digest alongside publisher Hode Rubino. Hode, the Sun Devils come out and win their season opener against Southern Utah 41-14, but it was a sloppy win. Can we delve into that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, you know, on the one hand, you don't want to be uh, overreaction week one uh, um, type of guy. And that, that doesn't only go uh, in cases where you're overwhelming an opponent that you're already heavy, a heavy favorite to begin with, but also if you also have a win that's less than impressive, like Arizona State did today, not to think that there's going to be just gloom and doom for the rest uh, of, uh, of, of the 2021 season. Uh, I've said in, a, in our preview piece that uh, this is the type of game we're really in an, a no-win situation because if you win big, it's really ho-hum. Nobody's really going to make any sweeping conclusions. And on the other hand, if you don't win in such a convincing manner, just like Arizona State did or did not do tonight, uh, then uh, you, know, you, you shouldn't be thinking that uh, this is really a sign, a, a, a sign, of, a sign of things to come. Uh, I think that you know, Arizona State, like I guess any, any other Pac-12 team, uh, was playing in front of a not a full house, but definitely uh, t tens of thousands of people for the first time in a long time. Uh, Arizona State, we know, is a team that even though it has a lot of veterans, also likes to play a lot of young guys. And we definitely saw the drop off between those veteran guys and the young guys, especially in the second half. So. Uh, this is definitely a very a very good learning tool. Needless to say that if ASU played even a decent, I would say, Group 5 opponent, let alone a Pac-12 opponent or a Power 5 opponent, they probably would not uh, come away with the win the way they played. Uh, you know, good, good for them that uh, all these mistakes, all these miscues did happen against a team uh, in, the, in the caliber of a, of, a, of a Southern Utah so they could quote-unquote quote uh, get away with a sloppy play but really uh, have a lot of... Um, aspects that if you're an Arizona State fan and coach you really hope they're fixable uh, so, that, so they can improve for next week but absolutely a, a, a sloppy win there's really no, 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 no other way to describe uh, a game where you have just about a, a dozen penalties and over 100, 120, 120 penalty yards uh, that's really not going to cut it in most cases tonight luckily for Arizona State it was just enough to win. Yeah, so we mentioned the penalties, but let's take a look at the offense here. They threw for 199 yards, rushed for 222 yards. Great night for the running backs, but on the field, still a sloppy win. So can we get into that? Yeah, I think that basically on the one hand, you like to have the balanced offense. That's something I've been saying a lot um, all, all throughout the preseason. That's really imperative for Arizona State, uh, not to be one-dimensional like, like, like they were last year with uh, a a offense that basically ran the ball 65% of the time, passed it on, on, only for 35% of the time, and basically uh, they were able to overwhelm opponents that weren't able to stop the run, but the opponents that were able to figure figure their run game even later in the fourth quarter, uh, those are the opponents that, that ASU did fall short against just because their passing game uh, wasn't even close to being, uh, I would say, formidable. Now, you have on the one hand a very efficient uh, night by Jaden Daniels. Uh, he was uh, 10 or 12 passing, I think, for around uh, a 130 yards or so and you, you definitely wanted to see a more explosive passing game I think that when you see the same Southern Utah team play a team like San Jose State who among the group five t uh, conferences is definitely one of the better teams out there but they're able to absolutely shred that secondary uh, for for over 400 yards and Arizona State comes up with just really half half of that figure I think they're still somewhat concerned and if folks were looking for this passing game to take that next step forward and to show that okay this passing game is going to play at a higher level than 2020 thus we can expect better results from this 2021 Sun Devil squad you really did not get the answers over here. Now sure penalties uh, did contribute to that and penalties really happen on both sides of the ball for being fair. It wasn't just only the offense that did have miscue after miscue but uh, I know that Arizona State has a great running game, and they rushed for the ball for, for, for 222 yards. There were six uh, <laughs> rushing, rushing touchdowns. That really shows you that dominating ground game in 2020, more of the same in, 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 in 2021, and we even saw some uh, some run plays like, like Ricky Parasol with with a long touchdown that, that really was, over, that was really um, off of a trick play. So I, I think that uh, that is one comforting thought, if, if any, that you can take uh, from, the, from tonight's game. But... The offense really never really got into rhythm. I and mean, Zach Hill, the offensive creator, talked to us after the game. He said that um, it was really hard when Southern Utah was holding for the ball as long as they did for the offense to come, to come in and establish some kind of rhythm. That's not the whole story, but I think it's a pretty significant part of the story why this offense really wasn't uh, uh, really, really playing 
at a level that you really think they would be dominating on both the passing game and the ground game. Uh, they, they did dominate in one aspect much more than the other, and ultimately uh, that was enough. But again, go, going back to my earlier point, uh, when they're going to play teams much stronger than uh, Southern Utah, this effort is, is really, is really not, is definitely not going to cut it. So now it's really back to the drawing board uh, for, for Arizona State, and especially the passing game. How do they get this uh, passing game more, more, more in rhythm? How do they get more, more, more wide, wide receivers involved? And Jaden Daniels, as efficient as he was, it does seem like there really wasn't that explosive element that you wanted this Arizona State passing game to show. And again, not to hop on the fact, this is the same uh, Southern Utah secondary that gave up f over 400 yards, and, and they're coming here on five days rest, and Arizona State's only to, uh, able to muster just half of those passing yards. I think that is a valid uh, reason for concern, but I think it's also fixable uh, for, for the rest of the season. Against any FCS school, you'd want to see Arizona State's defense overwhelm them. Do you think ASU did that tonight against Southern Utah? I think in, in some regards, yes, because uh, three out of their uh, first four possessions of the game were at, uh, did end up in, in, in interceptions. So that is definitely an opportunistic ASU defense, which we saw a lot in 2020, even though it was only a 2-2 two and two campaign. So yes, we, did, we, we definitely saw more of the same. Linebacker Darren Butler, outstanding game, not one but, 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 uh, but two interceptions. Did a great job just jumping those two routes on those picks. Uh, De De DeAndre Pierce uh, had, had a great interception, almost returned it for a touchdown. And yes, his dad, Antonio Pierce, uh, definitely gave him a hard time because I guess DeAndre Pierce uh, back in the day was a running back, a pretty good offensive player. And here he is basically playing running back, uh, getting what was supposed to be a pick six and actually, and, 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 and actually fell short of the, uh, of the goal line. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you look at a, at a defense that did, uh, did register uh, two sacks, uh, six, six tackles for a loss. And really, when you look at the stat sheet, it's kind of weird because Southern Utah did hold the ball for 30 minutes. Yes, the time of possession was pretty much even between ASU and Southern Utah. But when you hold the ball for 30 minutes, you think you would come up with more points than just 14. So I think the ASU defense, which they were sloppy in their own right, uh, definitely some very, very untimely penalties that, that, that did keep some drives alive for the, from the, for the visitors. But uh, over the overall, I would say that uh, it's a defense that, that, that really did its job. Played probably a little better than the first half than, than, than the second half. But again, going back to another earlier point, the second half, the ASU coach was really trying to play as many young and inexperienced players as possible because let's, uh, let's face it, in two, three weeks, uh, you're really going to have to go with the starters uh, almost uh, for, for the entirety of the game. So it's good to get that game day experience for those younger players. And that's why you did see some miscues, not only on offense, but also on defense uh, as the level of experience. Uh, was uh, lesser and lesser than it was in the beginning of the game. But uh, I think the defense uh, overall probably can probably come, come away a little uh, happier, a little more content uh, than, than the offense. But, 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 the, but there are definitely, definitely things to, to clean up on that side of the ball. But uh, there's no doubt in my mind that they really put an offense that – Maybe it was somewhat sputtering today in great position, especially in the first half, because uh, those uh, three interceptions all resulted in touchdowns for the, uh, from the, for the Sun Devils. So the, the defense uh, definitely, definitely did their job. But uh, again, it may be a, a more pleasant film session for that side of the ball the next few days, but uh, there's still uh, a, a really, really a lot of things for this defense to go over and clean up uh, for next week and the rest of the season. So touching on the offense, and we've talked about the defense, how about the special teams? First play of the game, Arizona State kicks off out of bounds, and we heard Herm talk about it in the postgame presser. Can you break that down? Yeah, I think uh, special teams uh, were not really all that special, but you have to also make a real, real distinction, Nick, between some aspects of special teams that actually looked pretty darn well and some that really just made you just face plant time after time. You mentioned opening kickoff uh, going out of bounds. Uh, one PAT blocked because of low trajectory. One, one PAT hits uh, the, the, the right upright and, uh, and, 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 and is no good. Uh, a two-point conversion, which I guess you could call also a, a special teams play, uh, is not able to be converted just because of a penalty. Uh, but I guess on the other end, uh, a PAT that was for th 36 yards long did, did, did actually go in. So go, you know, go, go figure. And I think it was kind of, kind of ironic that uh, Herm Edwards, before the season, was concerned about the kicking game, was concerned about special teams, and unfortunately did manifest itself in, 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 in that area. But... I think we definitely have to look at the bright spots over here. Uh, freshman punter, Eddie Chapisky. Man, that's, a, that's a, a, a tongue twister. He really 
did a great job. He only punted twice, which is great because that, that, that's a good sign, especially in a game like this. He averages, I believe it was uh, 46 yards on two punts, both, both of them inside the 20, had one punt o over 50 yards. For a true freshman playing in his first ever collegiate game, I really, really don't think you can ask for for for, for, for really much more than that. And I think special teams is always an aspect that, in my opinion, it really didn't matter if the team on the other side of the line of scrimmage was an FCS or a G5, because uh, that's maybe. Uh, one aspect that really kind of really kind of cancels of each other, and it's not really an aspect we can overwhelm somebody on offense or defense. So I think uh, big big kudos for the for the punting game and the punt coverage for that matter uh, for, the, for the Sun Devils. Uh, Digi Taylor, we already knew is a, already knew is a, a great kick returner. Um, obviously, didn't have a whole lot of uh, opportunities, which is a good thing to, to return kicks. But when he did, he, he definitely showed his mark over there. And I think he averaged uh, on punt returns, uh, doing for the first time since he got here at Arizona State, over 36 yards of punt returns. Uh, Rashad White only had one punt return for 36 yards himself too. So I think those are definitely aspects that Herm Edwards, if we're being fair, was also concerned about going into the season. And at least for this uh, for, for this first game, I think uh, he can definitely come, uh, come, out, come, come out with a big smile. Uh, there were no field goals attempted. One can only wonder what would happen in, in that vein after seeing the kickoffs and, uh, and, and the PATs. But actually the kickoffs, I should say, the Logan Tyler did improve quite a bit um, after that uh, uh, opening kickoff were out of bounds. I think, I think if all the kickoffs, may, aside from one, and obviously there were quite a few, uh, did actually go, 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 go for a touchback. But, uh, yeah, special teams uh, maybe doesn't give you as many concerns as the offense in the passing game in specific or the penalties as a whole. But uh, one area that uh, you wanted uh, the players on the field to maybe prove the critics and the, uh, the, the, the worrisome people out there wrong, and I don't think they exactly did that. So uh, special teams are uh, definitely uh, another area that definitely needs to be cleaned up for next week. Yeah, so talking about next week, the Sun Devils are going to be back here at Sun Devil Stadium where they'll host UNLV. Hode, what do they have to do to prepare for this matchup? Well, first of all, I don't think they should take UNLV lightly because I think it was easy to take Southern Utah lightly after getting trounced uh, against uh, San Jose State the week before. And we saw that this is a team that really was able to, to grind it out. Uh, did actually have some some, some pretty good uh, playmakers on, on, on both sides of the ball that did give ASU some kind of fits. So uh, I'm not going to say it's going to wake up call because I think it's kind of ridiculous to call um, game one, a wake-up call, especially when you end up winning it. But at the same at the same time, uh, UNLV, a very surprising home loss to an FCS team themselves in Eastern, in Eastern Washington, double overtime, 35-33 defeat. So UNLV is not really coming over here uh, all, all uh, you know, with, with uh, confidence and swagger. But again, the same could be said about Southern Utah. So I think uh, that's actually uh, a good uh, lesson to see what happened over here and to say, okay, now you got a UNLV team that you think is really going to be uh, down down on their luck and, and really disappointed. But uh, again, you expected that from Southern Utah. You thought that this team was actually going to lay, you know, lay lay down for you for the you know for, for the entire game, and that never happens. So UNLV is not going to do the same. Uh, so for Arizona State, uh, de definitely clean up the passing game. You want to see a more explosive game. You want to see a passing game that's averaging uh, pretty close to 300 yards in the entire season. And next week against UNLV, that absolutely has to start. You know, running game, it's pretty pretty much already clicking on all cylinders. I don't know really what what else you can ask more. Than than, than uh, over the over 200 yards rushing um, and and, and uh, six uh, rushing touchdowns um, on, on defense. It's really more, probably more uh, in cleaning up penalties and really uh, walking that fine line between playing with passion and and, and playing and playing with emotion. We saw Tyler Johnson that was ejected uh, because because of a, a, a targeting call and uh, again some other careless penalties that didn't ultimately cost the ASU defense. It didn't cost the ASU team as a whole, but still uh, some some areas that, that, that definitely need to clean up and the special teams uh, like I mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago were really especially the, uh, the kickoffs and uh, we still don't know how the field goals are going to look like but as far as the just kicking with a, with a low trajectory that's something we saw a little in, in fall camp earlier and it looks like to be maybe somewhat of a lingering problem so you'd like a uh, game like UNLV to really uh, put that to rest and really have a clean game special teams wise because look I mean I'm not going to be surprised if it's going to be a two, three, maybe four touchdown win uh, next week. So you don't really, spe you don't really need special teams. They're not going to be that razor-thin difference between a win and a loss. 
but uh, those tough games are coming up in a hurry. We, uh, BYU in two weeks, and uh, the week after that, you're already starting a slate of nine straight uh, com com conference games. And if your special teams are still going to be shaky the next week, still going to be shaky the week after that, uh, you know, who knows um, how many games you can end up losing because of special teams de deficiencies. But again, I don't want to put everything on the special teams because I think offense definitely has a lot to clean up. Defense has uh, some things to clean up too. And uh, again, it's it's always easier to clean up things after after a win. And ASU was able to get this win. I don't think anybody's overreacting to what they saw tonight. Yes, it was sloppy. Yes, it was it wasn't pleasant uh, to, to, to the eye at all. But uh, in, at the, ultimately, I think that there's a lot of uh, teachable moments, a lot of fixable aspects that ASU can take from this game. Let's see what they can do next week against uh, UNLV, and maybe we can look back at this game as uh, a sloppy but valuable teaching moment for the entire team and maybe something that needed to happen in week one so when the tougher opponents come on the schedule, you're not going to repeat the same mistakes you had tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in to Devil's Digest. If you'd like to follow along, go to devilsdigest.com for the remainder of the season and the following content that will be coming. We'll be posting everything to the website. For Hoder Bino, I'm Nick Elsner. Have a good night.